Hello, everyone. Welcome to another coding challenge. Today's coding challenge is Agario. Agar.io. Agario, a game that I am, was not familiar with until recently when Little Ot on GitHub suggested this particular game. I looked it up. I played it for a few minutes. Uh, it's a massively multiplayer game uh, created by Matthias Valladeras. I don't know if I'm... Um, uh, um, pronouncing that correctly, you could go to agar.io and play it yourself. But basically, you're this blob moving around the screen and you eat other blobs. Now, here's the thing. This is actually quite complex. The simple mechanic, I think, is going to be hopefully something easy that I can implement in this short video. But I'm going to do this in several stages. And so part one is going. I'm going to implement the basic game mechanic, and in part two, I will start to look at how you we might how I might use how you might use WebSockets to create a multiplayer version of this game. So this video is just going to be the basic game mechanic. So I'm using the P5JS framework. I'm using the Sublime uh, text editor. I have a canvas and a black background. That's all I'm starting with, and I also have a JavaScript file called blob.js where I'm going to write a constructor function to create this idea of a blob object. The blob object will serve to be both you, the blob moving around the screen, as well as other little blobs that you are trying to eat. So what does this blob need? Now, I'm going to use vector objects, which are something that exists in P5, a vector being an object that stores an x and a y component for a position on the screen and lots of other things that we could do with that. So I'm going to say this.pause equals create victor, vector, <laughs> victor, what's your victor vector? Uh, width divided by 2, height divided by 2. And then I'm going to write a function called show. Uh, which actually, since it's in this object, I'm going to write this.show equals function. And I'm going to say fill to 55. And I'm going to draw an ellipse at this.x, this.y. And I also, I definitely need a variable to keep track of the radius, the size of this blob. Let's just make it 32 or 64 to start with. So then the size of the ellipse is the radius times 2, and the height is the radius times 2. So now if I go to sketch, I can just say var blob blob equals new blob, blob dot show. So let's just see. Where's the blob? <laughs> oh, something's going terribly wrong. I'm kind of being silly here where I forgot the whole point of this was I made a vector called pause for position, and then I tried to draw it at this dot x, which doesn't exist. So this dot pause dot x, this dot pause dot y. There we go. So there we are in the window. Now, this is something a little bit crazy as I just realized is part of this game. So I want to move around the space. So the, but the thing is, I don't, in the game, this blob that you're seeing on the screen right here moves. But visually, it stays the same. And rather, the world shifts uh, uh, relative to it. So we've got to kind of figure that out. So I'm going to do something else here, I think, to help us where I'm going to make an array called blobs. Boy, I need some better variable names. Uh, blobs can be just an empty array. And by the way, I think that I should give the blob a variable in the constructor so I can actually say how big to make it. So I want this blob to be 64. And now I want to say uh, var i equals 0. i is less than, uh, I'm going to add 10 smaller blobs, blobs index i equals a new blob, which will be smaller. All these blobs are going to be 16. And then now I can have a loop in the draw loop where uh, I call show on all of those. Now, look at that. They're all in the center. That's a bit of a problem. <laughs> so how about we also Something we could do is in this blob object, I could also give it an x and a y. And then I could say here, I want this blob to be, this blob to be in the middle. And I want these blobs to be at a random location. And then the blob is made with that x and y. There we go. So this is where we're starting. We have this idea of one blob that is me, I am the blob, and then lots of other little blobs that are food that I want to eat. So now the way that the agario works is the blob moves in the direction of the mouse. So let's see if we can figure out how to make that happen. Okay. So what I want to do is add a function called update. And let's think about, oh, this camera went off. Let's think about, um, 
I have some old Flappy Bird diagram here that I'm going to erase. Let's think about how this actually works. So here is the blob, and here is the mouse. What I want is I need to create a vector, an arrow, that points from the blob towards the mouse, and I want that to be the direction that it moves. So this is actually quite easy to do because, <laughs> coming back over here, if I know this position and I know this position, if I take this position minus this position, I get an, a vector that points from here to there. So I can actually use, coming back over here, I can say mouse equals create vector, mouse x, mouse y. And then I could say mouse dot subtract uh, this dot position. And then I can just say, uh, I could say mouse dot uh, set magnitude to like three. Set magnitude just takes that vector however long it might be and sets it to a specific magnitude. And then I could say this dot pause add. Ex <laughs> what am I doing? This dot pod add mouse. So really, th this is how I'm calculating the velocity. And Oops, we got some errors here. Blob.js line 5. This.update equals function. Oh, and you know what would help? If I called this.update, if I called blob.update. Mouse is not defined. And oops, I'm calling it velocity now. So you can see how that blob is now following the mouse. Here's the thing, though. It's moving and not the other stuff. So I want the, my view of the world to be relative to this particular object. So how do we do that? Hmm, I have an idea. What if instead of, what if, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to use the translate function. Let me come back over here. This is where the object is. And this is where the origin is. 0, 0. But let's say the object moves over here. What if I move the origin over to here? Then we should see it still. Wait, wait, no, no, I need to move the origin the other way. If I move the origin over here, right, it would be kind of here, which would appear back in the center of our screen. I, I kind of got lost in my own thoughts there. Basically, what I want to do is it's moving over here, but I want to shift the view to be over there. And the view of where we're seeing everything is kind of like, where is the origin point in our canvas? And translate is a function that shifts the origin. So what if I just said right here, translate by blob.position.x, blob.position.y, negative. Now, I think this is going to be a little bit off, and you'll see why in a second. It's working, but the blob is at the top left. So really what I want to do is translate by the center, because that's really where I want to have the view minus that. And now we can see, as I move the mouse around, the blob is the, always stays in the center, but these other things move. Am I doing this right? Guys, tell me in the chat if this is kind of the right idea. It's not right. Look. Is it? Yeah. Move this way, move this way, move up, move down, move this way, move this way, move this way, move this way. It is. Uh, it's just sort of, sort of strange to see. Let's add a lot more of these. It feels like I'm steering it incorrectly. OK, people are saying it's right. Feels a little off to me, but OK. The other thing about, OK, the other thing that's a little bit crazy here is that, what, what's happening now? And we're back. So I forgot something. As soon as I started moving it around, I forgot that the, this actual velocity is being tracked relative to the object's position which now is off somewhere, and that the, it's actually the mouse and the position are in the same place, and all sorts of, I actually, what I want now is I need to subtract just the center of the window. So I can actually just create a vector like this. I don't want to actually it's anymore subtract the actual position of the object, because the position of the object is relative to the world, but the user's interaction is always relative to the center of the window, and so that's what, that's what was messing things up. So now you can see um, this work, 
works well. Now, there's another sort of issue here, which is that the world should really be much bigger than what I'm seeing actually the width of the, the canvas itself. And in that sense, we can kind of do that really rather easily by saying, um, uh, let's pick a random x between like negative width and width divided times two, and let's pick an, a y between negative height and height times two, just so we have kind of like a larger space for the blobs to live in. And so now mm, you can see that as I move around, there's a much kind of larger world uh, of, of things for me to eat potentially. Okay. So I think we're moving along here. We've got the basic gist of the game. OK. Uh, now, I need to add one more thing here, which is that if I eat one of these, if I find one of these other pieces of blob things and eat it, then I get a little bit bigger. I think that's something that happens in the game. So one thing that I need to do is when we're looping through blobs index i, then blob grows. And actually, what I want to do is, uh, remove that blob. So blob index i dot splice 0 comma 1. And I find myself saying this a lot these days. I also want to loop through the array backwards because I just said this in another video I made. But uh, if I am removing things from the array as I'm going forward through the array, the, the elements slide backwards and I could skip one by accident. So it's good to loop through the array backwards. Uh, so let's see. I want to check. If the blob eats one of those other blobs, then I want to remove one of those other blobs from the array. And how do I determine if it eats it? The way that I do that is by writing a function, eats, which receives another blob, I'll call other. And I need to check something. I need to know what is the distance between this blob's x. You know what? And actually, there is a p5 vector distance function. So I'm going to say, what is the distance between this blob's position and the other blob's position? And if that distance is less than this blob's radius plus the other blob's radius, then we've eaten it. Why is that true? Good Oops. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Uh, right? If I have two objects and I check their distance relative to the sum of the two radiuses, radii, if they're overlapping, that, sum, that distance gonna, is going to be less than it. If they're not overlapping, that distance is going to be greater than that sum. So coming back over here, we can now say if it eats it, then I can also, let's say this dot r gets bigger, gets bigger by the other's radius, and also return true. Otherwise, otherwise return false. And come over here to the blob. Come over here back to the main program. And I think that's basically it. So let's see how that works. Oops. Invalid left-hand side in assignment on sketch.21. Uh, what's, oh, i equals blobs.length minus 1. OK. So we should see here, oop, blobs index i dot splice is not a function. OK. Of course, what am I doing here? This is absolutely incorrect. I don't know what, I haven't eaten breakfast this morning. <laughs> Clearly, I'm kind of struggling here for my energy. I want to splice out of the array at index i one element, which means remove index one element starting at index i. I don't know what I was writing before. It was completely wrong. Uh, blobs splice. Let me refresh here. Come on, eat. There we go. Eat. 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 Okay, so it's getting quite a bit too big just from eating a blob. So let's let's divide that. Let's multiply that by like 0.2. And we can see, there we go. And I think that what might be, um, OK, I'm back. Uh, the chat gave me some nice, helpful suggestions. A couple things about how the game actually works. One is uh, increasing the blob's radius is not actually how the game works. And this is actually a great thing that you should learn about if you're not familiar with. Because we often think of the blob, a circle size, as its radius. But that's not really its size. The size that we're seeing is its um, surface area, the area, which is calculated uh, pi r squared. So let's look at that. So let's actually let's fix that for a second. So um, I'm going to make a variable called sum, which is equal to uh, pi times this dot r times this dot r plus pi times other dot r times other dot r. So that is the sum of the two 
uh, areas of, of the blob that's eating the smaller blob. Now, the new radius should be the radius that's associated with that particular sum. And how do I get that? Well, um, let's think about this really quick. Uh, if the area equals pi r squared, then r squared equals area divided by pi, and r equals the square root of area divided by pi. So I can just solve for r with that particular equation, and I can come back to here. Ah! No! I'm, getting, I'm bad at my switching screen. I can come back to here, and I can say uh, this dot r equals the square root of that area. Uh, what did I say? Oh, no, no. Div that area divided by pi. So let's take a look at that. Ah, there we go. That's such a more beautiful and elegant uh, interaction. Now, the other thing that I was told that actually happens with uh, Gario is that instead of the, um, instead of you seeing your circle grow, the actual view of the world kind of zooms out. So while you're growing, what you see is you stay the same size and the other circles kind of shrink. And we can do that in P5 using the scale function. So um, in the same way that I use this translate function, I could scale the world by um, the blob's current radius divided by what it started with, which is 64. So right, if its radius is 64, then I'm scaling the word world by 1. So uh, let's see how this works. Now the problem is this is causing everything to shift to the right, which is not great. So and. Um, and by the way, the radius is getting bigger. So I wanted to do it the other way. 64 divided by the blob's radius. I want it to shrink. And so this is working, but everything is kind of shifting up. That's because I unfortunately am drawing everything relative to the top left. So really what I want to do is I need to change the whole view of everything for the blob to start at 0, 0, which is better anyway. So I want the blob to start at 0, 0. Let's go back to the main sketch. I want me, the blob, to start at 0, 0. And the other blobs can just go from negative width to positive width, uh, negative height to positive height. That should work. I, I kind of had that weird before anyway. And then the world is actually just drawn relative to negative the blob's position. So I'm always doing everything relative to that particular blob which starts at 0, 0. That's going to make things much better. Oops. Um, wait, wait, wait. Width divided by 2 plus? Wait. <laughs> I did this wrong. Whoa. Uh, minus. Yeah, there we go. Wait. Something is still off. Keep that. Okay, there's a, there's a kind of an issue going on here. So um, let me think about this. Let me get this right here for a second. I wanted to, I've done this twice now, but hopefully you're seeing an edited version of this now. Um, so the problem is actually that the first thing that I need to do is translate to the center. So let's not do anything just right now, but translate to the center. So now you can see this is where the blob moves freely around, and it should be growing as it eats other blobs. Now what I want to do is... Uh, I want it to, I want to scale it. I want it to scale it by its relative size, relative, its size relative to its original size. So you can see the world is kind of shrinking rather than the blob growing. But now that I have that, I need to do the scale before I, trans I offset the whole world then by negative the blob's x position, negative the blob's y position. So now if I do it in that order, you're going to, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oop, I need a comma there. Now we can see we have the world uh, doing what we, I originally hoped and intended it to do. So, um, so, okay. So now you can see that things are very kind of herky-jerky here. Um, and that's because everything happens instantly. The scale changes instantly. The view changes instantly. And it could be nice to have things massaged a little bit smoothed a little bit. And a way to do that is with a function called in P5 called LERP, which stands for linear interpolation. Instead of taking a value and setting it directly to the new value, I just want to kind of move slowly towards that new value. And so let's, let's do that with scale. Um, so 
The new scale is 64 divided by blob dot r. But I need a variable. I'm going to call, I don't want to call it scale because there's a P5 function called scale. So I'm actually going to call it zoom. So zoom, I'm going to start zoom equal to 1. And zoom should always be the lerp between the, uh, a value in between itself and what the new zoom is. And now the last argument of this lerp function, I have a whole video about lerp. You can find that video. Uh, if I make it like 0.1, let's see what happens. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 0.9. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to actually put it in there. Sorry, everybody. I got to actually use the variable I created. So what I want is I want it to be just a little bit 10% of the new value so that I interpolate towards it. And can you see that happening kind of smoothly? Let me, um, so one thing I want to do uh, just to make this more obvious is I'm going to just make it uh, 10 times that amount. Whoops. Oh, okay, wait, hold on, hold on. I think I had it opposite. I think this should be 0.9. No, hold on. Let's adjust the way the radius is growing to try to get a better look at this. So I'm going to change the radius. I'm going to take away that, uh, the using the surface area and just actually add the two radii together. Um, and then now we should be able to see, and, and by the way, there's so many. It's actually, I shouldn't allow any of the, it also like, it just eats a lot of blobs immediately. So let me start with quite a few fewer, just 10. And so now we can see what happens. As I eat a blob, it gets really big immediately, but then the view kind of slowly interpolates and shrinks. So you can obviously tune these numbers a little bit better, but I'm going to go back now to the surface area and sort of see. And I think I want to add one more interpolation here, which is just to interpolate its velocity so that it doesn't immediately get the new velocity, but rather kind of smoothly turns a little bit as you move the mouse around. I don't know that Agario is actually doing that, but I think that might be an interesting thing to add. So I'm going to add that here uh, in the blob object. I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a velocity. I'm going to give it a variable velocity, create vector, uh, uh, and it's going to be empty, 0, 0 to start. And then this is going to be its new velocity. And its new velocity has a magnitude of 3. And its velocity, I'm going to lerp to the new velocity by 0.1. So let's just see how that works. Uh, it's not defined. And of course, I forgot. <laughs> no. This dot, this dot. I always need the this dot. This dot, this dot uh, blob dot 10. Uh, and this needs this dot velocity. So you can see it's kind of the turning is a little bit more interpolated now, is a little bit smoother. Is it still going in the right direction, right? So you could play with that number quite a bit. Like if I made this number, you know, 0.01, its turning is going to be quite slow. If I made that number 0.9, it's going to be as if it turns instantly. So I'm going to just like use 0.2, and you can see now there's a, it's a little bit smoother. Now let's add. Let's go back to the original sketch, and let's add a whole bunch of these. And you can see here I am eating them all, moving around. And you know, I, as I eat them, I should probably add new ones. I've got a little bit of a performance issue because there's way too many of them. You can see the scale. I'm really kind of like zooming out on the world. But this is the basic game mechanic. So I'm going to stop here um, in this particular video. Um, I encourage you to take this, tweak it, improve it, uh, change the design of the blobs, change the size of the world. Maybe as an exercise, add the feature of when you eat a smaller blob, a new one gets added somewhere else. Um, and see what you can add to improve this and make this a little bit better. I'm going to do two more videos. This one video, I'm just going to show you how to make this something that's a little bit blobby, so the vertices kind of undulate a little bit, so it's not a perfect circle. I'm going to do that in a separate video. And then in a third part of this challenge, eventually at some point, I'm going to look at multiplayer networking with this, so multiple people could sort of play against each other and c consume each other in this kind of blob way. Um, somebody also mentioned to me that in the actual game, the blob doesn't eat it immediately. Maybe it has to envelop the whole thing, or they squish against each other a little bit. So there's some, some possible uh, also like additional interesting features that I could think about adding at some point to this. Suggest those and let me know in the chat what I got wrong with this uh, game. 
Um, and also, uh, I'm going to have to do some work in the chat. Also, someone mentioned about optimizing this. All these square root calculations are really slowing things down. And there's some ways around that that I think I could ultimately um, uh, do to kind of optimize and make it perform a bit faster, which I'll look at at some point as well. OK, so that is part one of Agario game in P5.js coding challenge. I'll see you uh, at a future video. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.